Yo, what's up, YouTube? So I got asked to speak about um, the senator, what is his name, Harry Reid, in regards to his comments about Obama um, being light-skinned and not speaking the Negro dialect. Um, now, in regards to Negro dialect, I'm still trying to figure out what he means exactly. Before I give my opinion on that part of his comment, I'm still trying to really key in on what he was trying to get at because I'm reading it a couple of different ra ways and before I formulate my opinion on it, I still got to make sure that I, I'm, I'm understanding what he was trying to convey if he was trying to convey anything at all. Because when he says Negro dialect, I, I'm like, what are you talking about right now? Right? Are you trying to be literal or are you more so talking about um, language? I'm not really sure. Maybe you guys know better than me. Um, but, you know, I'll do my research and please, if you know what he's trying to get at or you think you have an idea, yo, let me know. But in regards to him being light-skinned, I said that from the word go. Um, when he was first elected, uh, I, was, I got invited to go to this meeting um, at the school I was at at the time. Uh, it was different faculty, you know, different professors and assistant professors and um, just administrators on campus. I mean, I got invited to go, and it was part of, I guess they were doing some diversity week or something, and they were just talking about, you know, what change does Obama bring? And a lot of people in the room wanted to act as if Obama being president debunked all the stereotypes about black men, but in reality, it didn't, okay? It didn't debunk the stereotype of the scary, darker-skinned black man, so the brother that looks like Mackay Pfeiffer or Shaquille O'Neal or Omar Epps. It still didn't debunk that stereotype that these men can't make it um, because Obama doesn't fit that profile. I'm not trying to take away from him and I'm not trying to take away from all the things that he's been through. But at the end of the day, his softer demeanor makes him less threatening to people. It is what it is. Um, you and, and plus America, uh, especially in terms of the, uh, the black history side, has a history of colorism in regards to who has wealth, who has power versus who doesn't. OK, look at, for example, to illustrate my point, look at the founding fathers of a lot of these Greek fraternities. So Alpha, uh, Sigma, Omega, uh, Kappa, um, look at them and look at their founders. Look how they look, all lighter skin and tone, simply because people had this whole idea of colorism and you being lighter uh, meant that you know you were more accepted by white America so you wanted to keep your blood uh, how can I put this you know a, a, as light as can be because you benefited from it okay even now you know you look at people like Dyson um, Henry Louis Gates these men are all light skin I'm not saying that there's no darker skin prominent black men or political people or commentary people who do commentary I'm not saying that but I'm saying that a lot of these men tend to be lighter in skin tone okay not because they themselves somehow are, are identify as not being so much black but more so because other people perceive them as less threatening and if you're not in position of power that matters so you the light skin person I understand that you you went through your fair share of hardships, but at the end of the day, for a lot of them, they come off less threatening. Not all, because there's still features. I think a lot of people with Obama get so much caught up on his uh, skin color, but it's more so his features, because his soft, it, because he doesn't have the typical black features combined with the skin color, he's less threatening. And it's hard to put into words without trying to offend anybody, but it is what it is. Because to me, it's not even so much about being light-skinned, because if you take somebody like Kenya Martin, um, I don't know if you guys know who he is, but he's a Ford, plays on the Denver Nuggets, you know, Google him and you'll see how he looks. To me, he still gives off the whole idea of this scary black man, simply because of his features. Okay, um, so I don't think it's so much about skin color, even though our country does have a history of seeing more well-to-do black people of lighter skin, but it's more so features, and I think that's what he want. That's what he should have said. But most people always get skin color and features confused. Yes, they're similar and they're related, but they're not necessarily the same. I can show you light-skinned people who have black features in terms of the lips, the cheekbones, and the nose. So in terms of how they come off, they come off black. Okay, I can show you black men 
who are light skinned but because of their features they very much still fit the profile of the scary black guy who's gonna walk in and you have to hold on to your purse because he may rob you and what I'm trying to say is Obama doesn't come off that way yes Obama destroys a lot of stereotypes that hurt black men but you have to realize his upbringing and you have to account for the fact that he doesn't destroy all stereotypes so I think this senator um, or whatever he is a politician I don't think he did it in a proper way um, and I think a lot of people are shocked because he brought it up. Um, but it's one of those things that it's going to be shocking. You know, if a white person brings it up, it's going to have shock value. If a black person brings it up, it's going to have shock value. But at the end of the day, it still needs to be said. So I'm not too mad at what he said because I've said that from the word go. And plenty of black men that I know said the same thing. Yeah, it's a victory for black men. But at the end of the day, there's still a couple of asterisks by it. Okay, um, he doesn't destroy the whole myth of, uh, uh, or not even the myth, but the whole stereotype of black men having it, you know, darker skinned black men having a lot of biases against him. Like I said before, if he looked more like Shaquille O'Neal and Omar Epps, it'd be a rap. But because it, okay, because his skin is lighter, but more importantly, because his features are less threatening, right, and you can attribute that to maybe him being biracial, um, it worked for him. Like I said before, people weren't as scared. And if you're a voter and you're trying to put him in power, you feel easy. You feel more comfortable around him. Trust me, I'm around these people, okay? I'm around more middle, upper class white people than I am any other group, simply based off of where I live and where I work. Um, and the whole idea of them not feeling intimidated or them not feeling scared is still very much an issue very much an issue for these people and for them it's like finally a non-threatening black man I don't feel scared around him I don't feel like my manhood is challenged around Obama um, you know look at the way he speaks look at the way he went to school oh you know he doesn't scare me as opposed to you know some Omar Epps looking brother that's trying to do the same thing and all of a sudden he just walks into a room and he sticks out right his you know his frame his skin color his short hair or, you know or his shiny black head right you know it's just like wow this guy is so different it's a little bit intrusive towards me I feel threatened not only is he able to hang with me mentally but physically he's just domineering over me but with Obama like I said before you don't get all of that like I said before he still helps out the image of black men and you know debunking some stereotypes but at the end of the day it's not the end all be all. People aren't afraid of him. Your initial reaction isn't to be afraid. I don't care. I, I've walked into rooms and I've met people and we're cool now. And they, after we've been friends for a while, they always tell me, oh, when I first met you, I was intimidated by you. So their perception was that of intimidation. I always get that. From any non-black person I meet, right, or no, they always say, oh, man, when I first met you, whether it was high school, college, or even now, oh, man, you know, yeah, I was intimidated, man. Like, oh, your size, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, yeah. Did Obama have that? Not so much. Really, not so much. So that initial perception, and like I said before, perceptions are very important. He didn't necessarily have to go through that. He didn't have to walk into a room and have people initially feel like, oh, hell no. Okay, he got the pass. Just like how lighter skinned black people with certain features in the early 20th century got a pass. And they knew they got the pass. That's why they had their uh, brown paper bag societies, blue vein societies, like I said before, that are still around today mind you and you can just look at TV and you can see that a lot of the, the, the more prominent uh, black people whether it's some politician or, or, or some CEO uh, they always tend to look a certain way like I said you can look at Dyson, Henry Louis Gates and there's some other people I just don't know their names but they always tend to look a certain way their wives always tend to look a certain way in Black in America Part 2, when they had the segment about the upper black elite, just look at that segment again and look at the skin color of those people and look at the features. So at the end of the day, in terms of what this politician guy said, Harry Reid, I agree with the first part of what he said about his light skin. People may hate it, but it's the truth. I'm not taking away from what he did, okay? But his light skin and his features helped him. And it didn't take away America's fear of darker skinned black men with black African features. It didn't take that away. It didn't debunk that. It didn't.
and I'm not afraid to say it, people can get mad, but like I said before, I'm willing to admit that Obama helped out black men a lot, but he just didn't go all the way. And a lot of people who want to brush race, uh, race under the carpet love to act as if Obama being there you know, crushed all these stereotypes against black men, but in reality, they know it didn't. If white people had to create a black person that they felt not threatened by, it would look like Obama. And I'm not saying that, you know, he's somehow fake and, you know, man-made, but what I'm saying, if they had to create somebody, a black person that they weren't afraid of, he would look just like Obama in terms of his skin color and his features. So like I said before, I agree with the, the first part of what this man said, but in regards to the second part about Negro dialect, I'm not sure what he means by that. And before I say how I feel, I need to do more research or background information, get more background information in, in terms of what he was trying to convey. So anyways, you guys take it easy. Tell me how you feel. God bless.